I said, the closer you get to your designation or where God has you to go, the powerful your enemy get. Um, I, I was talking to a young man after the film when he said, Pastor, I need to talk to you. And I said, okay. And back um, about a year or two ago, I uh, saw him at Unfortunately, he had invited me to, to sing for his mom. And I got finished singing, he said that he was going to give a, give a church a, a nice donation. And I get a call from my grandma, and he told me, he said, he said, what happened with the donation? He said that he had some people to talk him out of it. Talk him out of it giving the donation to new generation. And you know, it, it, it didn't bother me that much. Um, but I was posed a little bit, so I saw him yesterday at the funeral. And he came to me. Just wait a minute, I'm talking about. Came to me. He said, I need to talk to you. And I, I already knew what he wanted. But he, he, he apologized, kind of apologized, and said, you know, when you listen at what folk. All right, Pastor. Talking. Believe it or not, new generation, you got more enemies out there than you know of. And you ain't done that to nobody. You ain't done that to nobody but trying to follow the leadership of your pastor. Trying to follow the vision of the pastor, even though I know sometimes it get crazy. Uh, sometimes it may get too deep for other folk. But you just follow the leadership and the vision of the pastor. Me and my wife, we were doing everything we can. And so forth. So what I did was I got him. I said, look, here's what I want you to do. I want you to come with me after the funeral. So I took him down to the church and showed him. Start shouting right there in the church. Start crying right there in the church. Because he didn't know. Because people was telling him other stuff. Right. You know, don't allow people to talk you out of your blessing. Hey. You know, follow the leadership of, of, of the pastor, of the man that God got. And that was one of the things that the pastor was preaching yesterday at the funeral. He said, that's uh, in Toledo, Ohio, where he, he lives, and there's so many vision killers and uh, pastor fighters. Uh, just stay in line. And that's what he was saying at the film. Just stay in line with the man or the woman of God because people are going to fight. People are going to fight. They're going to fight. So the enemy stay busy. Pray for uh, me and my wife. Pray for Deacon Lewis who's down there trying to get the wine done. Pray for George. Amen. Because guess what? He gets it that way. There's so many people that have tried to disencourage him. You know, George, you need to stop. You need to stop. Them folks ain't giving you no money. They ain't doing this. They ain't doing that. You know, Deacon Lewis, you know, that's, that's a lot of work. You know, they don't come to me. But they try to disencourage you from doing it. So what I'm saying is the closer you get to your designation, the stronger your enemies get. Amen? Amen. And look, when whoever want to lead, wave bye-bye. Don't, don't try to, you know, just wave bye-bye. You haven't done anything. Just wave bye-bye and say, I appreciate the time that you spent with us. But we still have to do what God has called us to do. Amen. Amen. When the time comes, I, I don't know how God's going to work this thing out. But I promise you, I'll let you know step by step what's going on. Okay? I'll let you know. From the time that we leave, the time when we stand or whatever, I'll let you know step by step. Amen. Amen. Please, man, please, sir. Uh, if you want to go down, go look. And I promise you, I cannot give you a specific day.
Okay? All I know is still what? He's still working. Ain't that right, Joy? He's still working. And I want you to keep the faith and still be praying for those workers. Right, Isaiah? Right, Mike? Uh, whoever's going out there working, we still need a whole lot of help. Sweet and clean. I'm going still going out there doing ceramic tile. We're trying my best to put it down right. Uh, we just keep praying. Um, Sister uh, Loretta, uh, she have uh, asked, I don't know how we, we're going to, we have mentioned to that, the fact that uh, we were going to start, I think she was saying that the chair is going to be uh, $35. $35. Yeah, we're doing a piece. Yes, sir. Thank you, Pastor Will. We are doing a pledge uh, project for our chairs. My husband and I have committed to buying the first hundred chairs. And, and then we're doing a pledge, so we're asking, I know our family has already started committing to do $35, and we're, doing, we're gonna do a, a big plaque that will be posted on one, one of our walls with everybody who gave that $35 donation, dollar donation for a chair, their name will be listed on that plaque. So um, next Sunday, if God said live, I will have those pledge forms for you, and get your family members, your coworkers, or whomever. But make sure you just get their name and it's spelled correctly, just the first and the last name, and it's spelled correctly, so that it will be engraved on that plaque for those who made a contribution to our chair project. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, it was amazing that we first announced that at the uh, family reunion in Georgia. Uh, I had some unusual family members. Yes. Right out of that pocket, give David, David, $35 a chair. Now, if you want to give five two, that's fine. But um, anything that to, to cover the cause of what we as a church don't have um, um, to do. And my wife, we have already committed to purchase the copy inside the, the sanctuary. Um, and God is working that out. George is doing a pretty good job putting them doors up. Y'all go out and see that job that he's doing putting doors up. I don't know what it is about y'all. He got doors up like that. You know, you come get it and there's you no know, professionally done. They're going to open exactly the right. They're going to do, I mean, uh, George, thank God for uh, Just encourage all the people down here to keep going. Amen. And whatever we can, we always can sweep. And my wife been praying, we're going to still be doing some amazing things at, at the church. So we just give God a hand clap of praise for that. We stand. We stand as we get ready to go to the word.
pray that you give us a word in this season. God, we pray for a word, God. Somebody need this word, God. That is how we come forward. And God, we pray that you allow us to speak it with clarity and simplicity. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's turn to the book of Exodus. The 14th chapter is a very familiar passage of scriptures. I just want to um, just bring something to the landmark, uh, to the light that uh, what we go through every day and how do we see things that we go through. And it's how we see it is how we respond to it. Amen. It's going to be good. Man. Hopefully it's a good teacher for somebody. I'm just going to look at verse number 13 and 14. You have to say amen. amen. And Moses said unto the people, Fear me not, Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptian who you have seen today, or seen today, you shall see them again no more, or forevermore, or no more, or no more ever, or no more again, however you want to do it. For the Lord shall fight for you. You shall hold your peace. Amen. Can, can I talk about, right, uh, briefly, can I say, can I talk about uh, never again? Can I just talk about that? Say it with me, never, never, again, again. One more time, never, never, never. again. again. Mm. Never, again. Can I just say this? That there are times when God brings us out of situation. Instead of we praising God for you, sometimes we look in the back of our mind and say, well, you know, this same thing is going to come up again. So Paul, sometimes sometimes we be waiting for stuff to come up again when God has already said no more. All right, Pastor. Teach. Oh, yeah. I can't understand how can we go through the same thing yeah. What I'm saying to God, God, I got faith oh, yeah. 
in enough to trust you to believe in that starting with me first not doing some early to get broke Pastor. Don't, 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 don't miss that. It is. Because the Bible says faith without works is dead being alone. If, 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 if I say, God, I never again, I won't, I, I won't be broke another day in my life, then why am I going to continue to keep accumulating me? That's right. That's right. God is not going to infringe on your will. So we go through trials and tribulation. We go on through them over and over. Look like it's just a revolving door. Touch it until we're going to stop. See, I got a maid up there. Get a promotion being a super. 
supervisor or being whatever. They're going to call on me. She thinks she's something. Mm -hmm.
ain't all them doing my job. For won't you be afraid of them? Right. You know this day, we're gonna call this day. This day folk coming, this day, let them come. Street folk don't scare me. Told about I'm not scared. I said, the only one that I'm afraid of is God. All right. But I don't feel nobody. People are all right. Long they got you in front. Know that the children of Israel were so independent. They, they were in bondage, and some of them in bondage so ass as wood. And, and they, when, they, when, they, when, they, when they found and delivered, some of them still didn't want to come out. Oh, yeah. Somebody help me up in here. Wow, I feel like preaching how I feel. They still didn't want to come out. They got used to the man slapping them upside the head. And now they feel all right. It's not a man. If, if the man don't hit me, he don't love me. Mm. All right, Pastor. And they get slapped all upside the refrigerator. They leave and come back and go out of the house. And then turn around and go right back to the same man. Right. That been slapping them upside the refrigerator. Because they've been in bondage so long, they don't know what else to do. God, come yes, on. Pastor, show you right. And then what they found, found a real man. Oh, yes, Pastor. A man that's going to treat them with kindness. Oh, a man that's going to take care of them and love them. Who wants that? Oh, yes. Somebody help me up in here. Because we've been so used to being in bondage. And so therefore, therefore, our, our minister Lewis, we have developed a negative attitude. And anything come your way, you negative. Oh, somebody got help. If a good man come to you, you negative. He ain't nothing but an old dog. You ain't know it. He don't look good. He looked at Saul came out and he, he may be able, he may look like E.T., but as long as he could to me. Somebody will talk you out of your best. They, they, they tried to talk. And, and, and they, 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 some of them, some of them old school folk. Us been here a long time. And they us leave here. We ain't, we ain't, we ain't got no grave to, for, for our graveyards, for our children. We ain't got no graveyards. And, and if we stay over here, at least we got somewhere to bury our dead. All right, Pastor. Oh, yeah. Say that again. again. That's why we can't build relationships. Yeah. Because he's still in bondage. Yeah. That's why this man would never be able to please you. Because you're still in bondage from the past relationship. Say that again. He that the someone that said free is free indeed. Yeah. Remember, my wife had to get me straight. She said, I ain't your egg white. Now, what she say? Same old noise. Yeah, yeah. 
this and that and the other. Oh, yeah, Pastor. She said, look again. We look, I look different. And I am different. Whatever went on in your past, don't bring it up this way. So don't bring it up because I look, look, sound like you still in bondage. Right, 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 Sound like you still hurting. So don't bring that hurt of your past into this relationship. Yeah, that's right, Pastor. He was trying to tell the truth a little, a little bit, at least a little bit. I said a little bit. You know, we ain't gonna never own up to all of it. Right, you know. <laughs> a little bit. So I had to get rid of that. That's right. And to serve this present age. Come on, somebody. And so, and so, he, God had to instill into most. Moses, look at, look at the, look at the text. Moses, I'm getting ready to lead you out. I'm getting ready to lead you out, and I want you to tell him. He said, "Look, look." He said, "Look." I want you to let them know. He said, "Look, let us alone that we may go and serve God, that we may go to the mountain, that we may go in the wilderness and serve God." And Moses, look, y'all feel not. Stand still and see the salvation. Oh Lord, look at look at the tape, look at the tape. And look, you know, stand here and see the salvation of the Lord. He said, now, what he will show you today. Yeah. For the Egyptian, your demons and your devils, uh -huh. whom you have seen today, you shall want. Come on. You will never see them again. Yeah. Now notice what the text said. Uh -huh. The text said. I'm going to prepare you. And this will be before they got to the Red Sea. Uh, all right. All right. This will be before they, this will be before they got to the Red Sea. Uh, and what God, can I just tell you what God is saying right now? You got to make a proclamation right. and say, never again. Yeah. Because your demons and devils will show up again. And you got to make a proclamation right now before you get to your Red Sea. And you got to make a proclamation that God and whatever you want to bring up in my life, whatever you want to bring up in my past, tell to them the neighbor, it's not going to work. Oh, yeah. This made me cry last time. This got me all upset last time. This put me in the hospital last time. But look, whatever you want to do from this point on, I'm going to make a declaration. God says, never. Never again. Oh, I feel like my other rises feel like they're getting a little bit better right now. I walk a little bit better. My head has been hurt, but I, I walk a little bit better right now. Amen. Because I've been laying hands on myself. Amen. Amen. I asked Diane, I said, Diane, what, what can we do for our derives? She said, we can't do it, it, nothing. It's uncurable. Amen. And I, I said, well, I don't know where it's uncurable. And I, and I said, well, I said, I've been, you know, I, 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 we got a treadmill at the house. And, 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 and my blood pressure been real, it been real high. Amen. And so, amen. What God did was, uh, you know, you, you know, you got to exercise. So what, what he did was, he took, I took the exercise that I needed for my hip to keep my, my joints moving. And while I was doing, amen, while I was doing that, God brought my blood pressure down. Come on, somebody. I got a normal blood pressure. Amen. I, I checked it this morning. It's one third over 80. That's normal. Come on. Amen. One third over 80. That's the new normal. Hello, somebody. I, I, I know my blood pressure. Amen. Amen. The old number was 120 over 70. The new number is 130 over 80. Y'all better check that. Come on, somebody. And so I keep my blood pressure checked all the time because I know, come on, somebody. I know that some past, can, can I just praise God? I know that some past history in my family. Amen. I know that some heart disease in my family. I know that's been many heart attacks 
in my family. So what I have declared and I have decreed and I said, Lord, never again. Come on, somebody. Never again. I know that some high blood pressure and heart attack and taking some of my family members out. But right now, I'm stopping the boat right here. In the name of Jesus. Them same folk that have been running after you. You ain't gonna see them. No more. Pharaoh set them on there. I want you to kill them. Oh boy. Get ready to close, man. God will harden your enemy's heart. The same folk that let you go are the same folk that upset with you since they let you win. Now they're coming back after you. Because they found out because they you let you know they let you win. Now you bless. Now you got a better job. Now you got a better car. Now you got a better man. Now you've got a better everything. Now they hate all of you. And so what they're going to do now, amen, God and hard their heart. And now they're going to come after you again. And what God is saying is, that's what I want them to do. Because I want, I want them to know, and I want you to know who God is. Come on, somebody, amen. Touch your name neighbor. Amen. Don't be upset, amen, when your enemy come back after you. Because what God is trying to tell you, I feel like preacher right now. What God is trying to show you, what God is trying to show you, I'm trying to make an example out of them, out of them enemy. Come on. God said, I'm trying to make an example out of them enemy. And at the same time, I'm trying to show you who I am. Yeah. Can I get a witness? I'm trying to show you that, look, there's no other God before me. I'm trying to show you that if you put your trust in me, amen, your enemies will be your footstool. I'm trying to show you if you just learn, if you just trust in the Lord and all of your heart, if you lead not to your own understanding, God, when he said, I will do it, direct your prayers. I'm trying to show you, amen, this day. And the reason why I heart the enemy heart is not because I want to break you down, but I want to lift you up. Come on, somebody. Touch your name and neighbor. The reason why God is doing some things in your life is not to bring you down, but it's to lift you up. The reason why, amen, that you still got enemies, the reason why that you still got haters, can I get a winning? You know, folks will hate you. For no reason at all. And what you got to understand is the reason why God said, Look, look, I'm going to send them after you. Can I get a witness? And what I want you to do is trust in me because God got a path for the enemy. He sent those, amen, Pharaoh on behind the children of Israel. Look like the me. Out of all the things that I see God do for the children of Israel, I would have stayed at the house. I don't care what Pharaoh would have said. But they came in, and the Bible said he held them up with a pillar cloud. Come on, somebody. With a pillar cloud by day and fire by night. He held his enemies up. And when he held the enemies up, God, that's the name that God will hold your enemies up just to make you prepare. And while the enemy was held up, God fought down on their knees, getting ready for the next step. And they were down. And while he 
cause you know you got some family that want to control you, you know that. Mm. I never seen nothing like this before in my life. You got some folk that want to tell you, uh, uh, brother friend, want to tell you how to run your life. They, they, they like it just as rapidly as they want to be. But they want to tell you how to run your life. I'm saying to myself, really? Don't let people tell you I wouldn't do that. You pray to God, 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 God will guide you, and God will not break you. Will it be one? Will it be one? Those are the churches open. Thank you for who you 
you are.